Hey, everybody. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. We hope you guys are doing super today on a Monday. And I guess if you're on the other side of the world, it wouldn't be Monday, but then it'd be a, a really early time and you wouldn't be here anyway. So <laughs> um, welcome to Jen and Bonnie, Sandra, Mary and Patricia. Oh, Burkana, what a pretty name. Lori Hansen, Claire. Uh, Rose, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We're excited that you're here. And today's uh, going to be an interesting day in that uh, I'm not, well, I, I might be doing some demos. It depends on what you guys want, right? I'm prepared to do a couple demos, uh, not necessarily painting, but uh, <clears throat> having to do with other things, materials. So Today is uh, this is episode 13, right? Yeah, episode 13. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> numbers are going up, so I, I have to, you know, have to think harder because it's a high number. But um, so what I thought I would do, guys, is start out with uh, showing you like uh, supplies that I use routinely. Like these are supplies that I use so much that, and they're probably ones that you use as well but you just never know. And I want this to be really interactive. If you guys are good with that, like if you guys have tips or other things you use for similar purposes, we want to hear about it and we'll highlight your comment. So please use that chat, you know, and uh, we appreciate you being here and uh, please like the channel if you don't mind and subscribe and, you know, spread the word because um, the whole thing on YouTube is really uh, a changing landscape to say the least. And so let's get started. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, essentially how I store, uh, not just how I store my paint, but the kind of paint I use. And okay, this is acrylic, first of all, and I know a lot of you work in different mediums, but um, there are like a lot of these supplies are good for multiple mediums. So like these squ squeeze bottles are great for say, if you're a cold wax artist, I would put some Gamsol in one of these. But I also have these really tiny little bottles because um, these are nice for like if you mix your own color and you have some leftover, there's not like they don't hold a whole lot of quantity. But um, I store my acrylic paints in here when I have a, a color that I, I made. And I just want to point out that um, I, <laughs> I have these big jugs here. I'm trying to figure it out. Just a second. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why no worries. I'm trouble. Um, so these are gallon gallon jugs, and I put the label on of what is going to go in here. And I just recently got some Nova Color paint, which is the kind of acrylic paint that I use, and I really really like it. And in the past, I've had questions. Um, we've all had questions about, well, how do you how do you move uh, the paint? that's in a gallon jug like this, which is huge, right? And so hard, like it would be hard to be working out of a gigantic container like this. This is Indian yellow. And um, so I don't know if any of you want a demo on how to move the paint from like a gallon jug like this bucket, which is again, hard, not as hard to get the lid on, hard to get it off, all those things. And then get it into um, a jug like this, which is so much easier to pour. And you see, once you go from here to here, and the, the way you do it is you take the lid off. I'll just explain it because that's probably all you really need is you stick the funnel in like this, okay? And then what I do is I'll put it in a bucket like this so that in case it tips, right? Because what if it tips all over and then you've got a big mess? So what I'll do is I'll even put it in a bucket like this. And then I'll open up my big container of paint like this. And I'll be standing, right, because the height of this is, is pretty tall. And then I'll just pour it through the funnel, right? And you have to be sure you clean out your funnel right away and that kind of thing. And so essentially that's what I do is I go from a uh, gallon jug, uh, gallon bucket to the gallon container, and I label it, right? And I've got the number here, 106. That's the number of the color from Nova Color. So that if I have to reorder, I'm like, okay, I need number 106. You know, it's just another way to um, keep track of that. Okay. Um, if you guys have any special ways of storing your paint that I haven't mentioned, um, but again, this is like a um, this is like a 32 ounce, and this is a 16 ounce, 
This is probably like a four ounce. They come in all different sizes and, you know, they're all available on, I get them on Amazon, but you guys might have a different place to get it. That was perfect, that uh, funnel that fit perfectly into that gallon yeah. pour jug. And yeah. and I never would have thought to have put that gallon pour jug into another bucket to keep it from <laughs> tipping. I mean, how smart is that? That's wonderful. Oh, Did you just it, get that giant funnel on Amazon? You know, I could have even bought these locally at like an auto shop. I honestly oh, don't remember. Yeah, but it does kind of look like that. Doesn't it? But I think they came like even in a like a threesome. So that makes me think maybe I did get it on Amazon. There's actually like a baby funnel too, because you never know. And you know, when you go to the smaller bottle, you can uh, downsize your funnel. But I, I almost always have a funnel because it helps with the spills and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so so that I just wanted to tell you that Nova Colors, the, the main kind of paint that I use for acrylic. And then we're going to talk about like, okay, what are some common supplies that like I, I really couldn't live without? And this is for many mediums, right? So uh, it's not just acrylic. It's not just oil and cold wax. And so, so I guess Lisa, if you can show my um, maybe, you know, no, you're good. You're good. Oh, okay. I'll go back. I, I don't really know the best way to show you this, but um, well, here again, this this is another Nova Color container that, again, it's not super convenient to work, I don't think, out of like such a big, because they're kind of liquid, right? These are fluid and they're wonderful that way. They're fluid. They're not a heavy, uh, the heavy, heavy uh, acrylic body. body. Thank you. Heavy body. So again, that's why I would pour that into something like this so that I can, you know, because I, I actually like to draw with my my squirt bottles if I have a panel on the floor, for example. So here's just another size of Nova Color. Okay. Um, um, Susan Henry Scott said she bought a trio of funnels at Princess Auto in Canada. So maybe it was an auto. <laughs> yeah, that's been. great. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Hey, you need different size funnels because you don't just have one size, you know, um, container. And so, yeah, if you can get a three, three pack, that's even better. Yeah. Um, so... I guess uh, the the mediums that like I use this, you guys have seen me use this. I used it last Monday and some of you were asking, what's the official name? I mean, all I can tell you is that it's in the hard, any hardware store. Go into the paint section, right, Lisa? I'm sure mm -hmm. you have this too, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's called painter's paper, but what they do with this is like, they'll, they'll unroll it and they'll, if they're painting a baseboard, they're trying to protect the floor or above the baseboard and it's, thin it's inexpensive and it comes in all different like heights so there's this height there's one shorter there's a longer one so i just typically have these because um and i've even worked some into a collage uh collage used it as collage because they get full of paint and then they're kind of interesting so and then um i i just absolutely love this guy which is a painter's edge and this is actually one that hasn't been used much because that's why it's so shiny but <laughs> <laughs> um, these are great for if you kind of like the, you know, rectilinear edge geometric type things and you don't want to use your ruler because that'll get full of paint. So this is just great. The, the thing about it is once you use it, um, definitely clean it off with like a wet paper towel. If it gets dried on there, then alcohol will take uh, acrylic off like if it's dried in or a razor blade that works well, too. And then um, another favorite of mine is uh, graphite. And if I had more time, I would actually do a little demo of why I love it so much. But I remember when I was first learning in caustic. So for those of you who are caustic artists, you, you know, you may or may not have thought of this. Um, I remember my very first in caustic when I knew nothing about the medium. I got out a sheet of like paper as a nice weight, 140 pound, probably hot press watercolor paper. And I did a drawing with graphite and stencils and, you know, just pencils. I adhered it to a panel and I put in caustic over it and that was it, you know, and I just found that um, it was easy. It was fun and it, it just was a great presentation. So um, I use it in, in caustic and then I've used it in definitely in cold wax and oil. And then, you know, if I was working in acrylic, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's going to smear a little bit, but then again, you can lock in those marks if you, if you want to. Pam. Yeah. Anne Latour is asking if anybody knows 
if there's a Nova color equivalent in Canada to buy paint in bulk? Do they Ooh. ship to Canada? A Nova color equivalent. I mean, Opus is the one I've heard of in Canada. A friend of mine who lives in Canada, um, she loves, I think it's called Opus. Do you know about that, Anne? Um, Cause I, my friend, uh, Jan, Jane Canyon, who uh, she lives up there in Canada, used to be in Vancouver. She'd go to Opus and I, I know that she loves the liquid type, you know, water, um, acrylics as well. So yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if Nova Color would ship to Canada, but it's novacolors.com, so you can check them out. She says yes, so she uh, has heard of that. So hopefully oh, yeah. she can see. And, they, and uh, Nova Colors has great customer service. Uh, so if they, you know, you can always reach out to them. Um, brayers, of course, and I just want to point out though that like I have two kinds of brayers, not just width wise, but like. This one is an Innovart and it's spongy, right? So it's mushy. Whereas this one's a speedball and it's firm. So there are times when you kind of, you know, if you do stuff with a jelly plate or you're moving paint around with cold wax and oil, you might have a preference and you won't know unless you have like the comparison. So um, there are times when I like the softer one, uh, there are times when I want this one and I don't just use them for painting. If I mount a painting on a panel, a, a painting that's on paper onto panel, and then I cover it with say parchment paper or a cloth or something, I need to roll out those bubbles, right? So that's when I'll use the firmer one because uh, you know, you're know you gentle with it, but you kind of really need, you don't have a lot of time to work when you're mounting paper on panel. It's right. like a race. And I find that you know getting starting from the center and working out, um, works really great. So I love and my brayers. Did, are, are they called different things when they're one softer or harder? The um, I do. I think the speedball, like the thing is like, if you, if you look for a brayer, it'll oftentimes tell you whether it's um, like a, a firm, like sometimes some brands will say firm or soft, I think. Um, and not every brand offers like the difference, but um, I know Innovart is, is I have not seen a firm in of art and speedball. I have not seen a, a mushy speedball. So I kind of associate speedball with the more firm and in of art with the soft. Yeah. Okay. Um, these guys, of course, um, we all know, I love our silicone tools and like the variety of sizes and they seem to last a really long time. And the cool thing is that you can use them for acrylic or cold wax and oil. And if they get kind of full of gook or whatever, you can always get that stuff off with um, alcohol. So if you get like stuff on it and you forgot to clean it or whatever, either Gamsol if it's, if it's dried out um, oils or I would say alcohol if it's dried out acrylic. So I like to use it. Actually, acrylic peels right off of it. Oh, good, good idea. Yeah. In fact, you're right because it's peeling off right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it peels right off. <laughs> All right. And wax, uh, if you use the encaustic, um, I don't know if it's okay to like scrape on the griddle, if it'll melt. I don't know if it's heat resistant or not, but I know if I, um, you know, I mess with it sometimes in the encaustic and of course yeah. that peels right off because it's silicone, right? It so. is, yeah. yeah. In fact, I don't even clean off my tools I, for encaustic because I'm, I'm partly too lazy and I know that if I just heat them up again, you know, I can wipe it off. I'm really yeah. bad when it comes to encaustic. I don't clean off my tools at all. I don't um, either, except yeah. the silicone, because I like to peel it. It's fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. One of my favorite tools, um, and, and I, I think this has to do with, like, your personality. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody needs to have, like, a pointed object in their studio. Right? <laughs> I have and, a few of those. I just think that there are days when I really want to go to my panel. <laughs> and, and, you know, related to that, I just want to talk a little bit about those three panels that I started last week because it's funny, like, um, after the, the call was over, I, I did continue to work on them and, and they look really different now. But it's funny how, you know, how, like, uh, all of us uh, are faced with um, how we feel when we move a painting forward sometimes we feel really super stuck uh, or we're really excited and we keep moving on and uh, forward on it. But then like, it's like, I've been trying to be aware of how 
differently. I think about the paintings each day I've come into the studio <laughs> and it's like that first, first day, right? Like right after we quit on Monday, I was, okay. Oh, it's a, you know, a lot of chaotic mess, lots of color. And then after the call, I put lots of gray in and it almost looks like it's been airbrushed, even though I did it with like um, a sponge tool, a sponge roller. And at first I was like, oh, well, you know, however I felt. And then I came in the next day and it was like, hmm. But each day that I came in, it was like a slightly different observation. Does that happen to you, Lisa? Oh, yeah, totally. That's why I say let him sit. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of like. I think it's cool because like, I feel like the paintings are trying to talk to you and they like, you can't, you're trying to have this conversation and it's just like, they're kind of like two strangers in the beginning, but then you're trying to get to know each other a little bit better. And um, some things are starting to grow on you. Other things are starting to bug you just like a real person. Like the more you get to know them, you start to like certain things about them. And then other things you're like, oh my gosh, that's, that's really not a good quality. <laughs> so Anyways, I just wanted to point out that I'm definitely experiencing that right now. And I, I just sort of feel like in, in when I'm in that, things are changing. And yet I, I had a preconceived idea that I want to like keep that idea on the side, but I don't want to superimpose it on something that may lead to something I like even better. Like I don't want to have a preconceived idea. Right. So, yeah. Um, Susan, um, every, you know, we have people tuning in, Pam, from Brazil and oh. Paris and, you know, all over the place, Canada. Oh. And um, so I just wanted to pop up here. Susan said that, oh, um, of course, no color does ship and okay. it does make it more expensive. But, you know, ladies and, and gentlemen, when you make your paintings, you just put that price in there. If it is more yeah. expensive with shipping, right. you know, yeah. put that cost in there. Yeah. And um, then also she said alternative is chroma paint out of Vancouver. So, nice. uh, you know, we just want to try to get this info out for everybody of what is good and helpful. And yeah. so um, Thank you. just make note of that, everybody. And, Thanks, and if you, yeah, if people from Brazil, you know, post where you get and what you get it from here. So it's a reference for everybody. Yeah, that's helpful. Because yeah. like you might be in Brazil and have your favorite brand, which we know nothing about, you know where to get it. Other people from Brazil will watch this video later and be like, oh, I live in Brazil. I don't know where to get it. You know, so really, guys, if you live in Europe or you have your favorite store where you go or brands, you know, please, this is the time to share. It's not just what I I'm showing you, this is like meant to be very interactive. Yes. Um, yeah. Thanks, Lisa, for noticing that in chat. Um, this, this tool too is wonderful. It's a, just a trial and you go to any hardware store, you know, you can get one of these guys, different sizes and stuff like that. But um, what these are, what I like them for is um, that like when you scale up or, or not, you don't have to necessarily scale up, but sometimes you're like, you want, uh, that contrast between super thick paint and super thin or super like smooth and lumpy, for example. And a tool like this is going to help you get that. If you have a, a blob of paint, whether it's heavy body or thin, the, the touch of it will allow you to spread it, you know, really far and you get thinner or just a little bit. And then you've got like a thicker area on your board. But the point is that it doesn't, it's not, like a brush and you don't Ooh. get the brush marks. Do you use one of these? I pieces? love those. Matter of fact, oh, I got yeah. a reward with a painting that I use that on, you know, big, big areas, you know, and, and it just looks so cool because yeah. the, the underneath parts of that painting are with brushes and scrapey tools and different things. But then the top layer, of course, I'm very intuitive and I like um, not clear edge shapes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I use that and I love it. <laughs> so, well, that's cool. So like on a, for how large was your painting that you used your trowel on? Then how um, I think it was 20 by 24 or something yeah. like that. I can't, yeah. I'd, I'm not for sure, but yeah. yeah, it, I, cause I just put, I squirt the paint from the tube on the trowel and. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. That's how yes. I do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what happens when, you know, you, you start to look at the tools that you might be painting with. I mean, there's such a huge difference between these two versus a brush 
And then you might add a palette knife, which a lot of people like to, to paint with a palette knife too. Okay, Lisa says, I live in Mexico and use Obertone premium quality. Is that acrylic, Lisa? Ooh. Must be a, probably an acrylic. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Anne says that she has, uh, TriArt has taken over manufacturing of artist quality. So oh. that's helpful. Anne, is that Canadian? I believe you were asking about Canadian. So I think oh, yeah, that's Anne Latour. Yeah. And she says mm -hmm. she's talking liters rather than gallons. So uh, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, Marla wants to see me paint with the trowel. <laughs> yeah, that would be really fun. Yeah, I'll let you know when I'm in the mood. <laughs> well, we, we probably need to let you guys know um, of our contest before we get too far yes. along here, right? Yes. So let's talk uh -huh. about that because, you know, yeah. maybe Lisa using her trowel is going to be a Monday, Momentum Monday uh, demo. Yeah. And so Lisa's going to pop up an Airtable form. It's just a form that um, in order to win, right? And what are you, what are you, whoops, there goes my... <laughs> Oh, Rod. Oh. What the contest is for six of these guys, not the deeper ones, but the more shallow one and three ace, and six Baltic birch panels. So you guys can do your masterpieces on those. So six and six. We're gonna call this our six and six, right? And we're gonna do yes. this like once a month. So here's the thing: in order to win, this is what you need to do. We First want your ideas. Continental for, US only. Yes, US only. Sorry, Sorry but, about that. Shipping and, and it's not just US, it's continental US. So sorry, Hawaiians right. and Alaskans. But yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but I will tell you that Rexart is looking into other possibilities. Um, it just takes time. So hang in there. Well, but and we'll Terry Koffel just posted, Pam, that she has actually talked to them about making her some 18 by 18s. Yeah. So um, and they had told us that. So I'm glad you reached out to them, Terry. So that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and if you reach out to them, you guys know they're a family company. They're so kind and giving and, and uh, just will spend all the time you need, answer all your questions. And yes, part of what the reason why, like Lisa and I love them so much is because like the word custom is what they're all about, right? Yeah. And I, while I'm at it, I'll show you this guy. Um, I, just, I just mounted a monotype, uh, encaustic monotype Ooh. on one of their custom panels. And um, like this size is 24 by 36. I couldn't find this on Dick Glick, you know? No. So what are you going to do? So no. I contacted Rex. And here it is on the back. You can kind of see they've braced the corners. They've got it um, down the middle. It's all yeah. braced. Yeah. Depth. Very nicely made. So there you go. Um, so they do custom panels. And they will do custom frames. But um they may not even be custom the more you guys order the 12 by 12s the more they're going to be like oh well maybe we should offer 16 by 16 and 18 by 18 but they just they're getting just getting started with the frame so anyways lisa have you put the air table form i'm gonna put it right now so here's the thing guys if you want to win the six and six the six 12 by 12 inch uh frames like this basswood frames and six panels if you want to try and win that we need your suggestions for um, ideas for Momentum Monday. So what, and I want you guys to be creative, right? Because just saying yes. like, hey, we want to see Pam or Lisa do a demo. Well, okay, be specific, like a demo of what, right? Because um, so the winner is going to have to be, is going to be chosen from the submission. So get submitting the deadline for your submission, because I want to choose a winner by Wednesday at midnight Mountain Standard Time, Mountain Daylight Time. So uh, all you have to do is give your name, your email, and your mailing address so we can ship it to you in case you're the winner um, and your idea, okay? Please do that as soon as you can because after today's call, you might forget and then you don't have any chance of winning. So we just want to see those ideas flowing in. And uh, okay, so is that good? Do you guys have that? Uh, so let's see okay. here. Um, huh. Okay, Laureen Van Voorst says she is Canadian but has a shipping address in U.S. Can she yes. answer? Yes, yes. As long as they're shipping to the U.S. If you guys live in Germany but have like somebody in the in the U.S. a U.S. address, sure you can because they're just shipping to the U.S. That's all. Okay, it has to do with shipping. Bonnie wanted to know how did you adhere that? That was lovely. Adhere what? Oh, <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that's a process. Um, it is an uh, encaustic monotype on thin Asian rice paper. 
And uh, I use what I use is another one of my favorite products that I just couldn't live without. This is my Liquitex matte medium. It doesn't matter whether it's matte or gloss, but it's got, you know, the consistency of this is um, it's a gel. So <laughs> I remember yeah. doing this one time in an art class and everything fell out. But oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was teaching the class and everybody was like, oh. So anyways, but this is a gel. And what I do is I, I put this on the cradle panel um, after it had two coats of gloss medium on it and then dried. I put this on top rather generously and I work quickly and I spread it really fast. And then I uh, adhere the monotype onto it and then I cover it with like a cloth or something, a real thin cloth. Then I get out my brayer and I do this from the center out, make sure it got all the air bubbles out and then on top of it, I put the, um, I kind of do my uh, pouring medium, which is another one of my favorite products I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah. And then I just do the steel wool thing and the coal wax thing. So for those of you who know my four-step process, know all about it. And yeah, that's what I do. And we have a video in your WLG library about doing that too, yes. right? So four -step if you're a member. Process. Yeah. It's also in my course. You guys, I have a lot of online courses in case you're oh, not aware. Cool. My school is artandsuccess.com. I love to teach love to share stuff. I've got lots of online courses and it's the one, um, I show you the four step process of how I get an encaustic like finish on my acrylic paintings in the acrylic and mixed media course. And I think also in the, um, yeah, the one with complex color, um, acrylic and, and mixed media with complex color. So yeah, you guys can definitely learn about it there and then uh, in the library. Mm -hmm. And before you move on to another product, Susan Henry Scott wanted to know why Liquitex and not Golden. Yeah, as far as the pouring medium, you mean? The yeah. the stuff that you adhered with. Yeah, right. So let me just, I'll just get this. Um, this is poured into a half gallon. This is my Liquitex pouring medium. And I know that's, that's, I, I don't think that's what she was talking about. It was the other jar of stuff that you oh. held upside down. This one? Yes. Yeah. That was oh, you could you definitely use paint. golden. Yeah, you could use golden. Uh, okay. uh, it's matte, though, and this just happens to be matte. But okay. golden or Liquitex, you just want to make sure you're using, like, the gel, the heavier medium. Um, that's what I do. Um, yeah. And, and then, so since you brought over your jug, tell us about that, why Liquitex? Yeah. So this is my pouring medium. Um, for those of you, again, who like that encaustic-like finish on an acrylic painting. I mean, I've had people say, I thought that wasn't encaustic, and it's, it's not. Um, and, and I'll show you two in a, in a second here because I'm ready to mount a painting into one of the Rexart frames. And I went through the process. I'm going to show you the three stages of like what that looks like. Um, and but the pouring medium, I get the Liquitex brand for only really one reason, because Golden has um, one called I think it's called leveling medium instead of pouring yes. medium. OK. Mm -hmm. um, and. Really, and it's probably such a, they're so close, but I think the Liquitex gives you slightly more working time. And that's yes. why I like to use this, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're both of, in. Yeah. A lot of if people I have trouble with the golden one, not uh, having enough time to oh. get it level. So um, yes. this one does seem to work better. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I wonder what it is that they do that gives you a little bit more working time. I don't know. But uh, that's great. Um, I also love little tins, you know, for storing this again for more cold wax and oil painters. But if you have leftover oils, like I really love these are candle tins. And like, I don't like these bumps on the bottom because I also use these in encaustic. So I kind of made the mistake of getting these ones with the bumps, but um, they come with uh, ones that don't have those bumps on the bottom too. Yes, and, I have the ones without bumps. Okay, cool. Um, and I also like, because I, I do like to do collage every now and then, and I, I have like, and I love geometry, so I have my shapes. I've got a lot of different sizes, and again, any craft store has these, but um, they're just a time saver uh, for, you know, if you really get into that sort of thing, and so I just thought I would mention that. All right. Um, Millie yeah. mentioned that um, Nova Color has mediums too and she uses them and they do very well for her what do they have mediums mediums yeah i haven't tried their mediums i have to do that yep she says they're less expensive okay now um 
I'll just mention a few like mark making things and I know you guys probably all have the same ones, but I, I just, for whatever, I'll just mention them. So, um, Sorrel transfer paper. I found out about this stuff in grad school and, uh, you know, there it is. It comes in all these different colors, blue, yellow, red, white, black, graphite. Well, it's graphite really. And, um, it's just like a transfer paper, like you can see on the side here and you lay it down on top of your painting and you get a pen or something to draw with or embossing tool. And you can just like, it transfers the line over. I use this mostly with my encaustic work and you can even make your own, but um, there's that. And then I just love my woodies, they're water soluble and they're like kids, they're for kids, but I just love them. They're great. And they, they also work on encaustic because they're, they're water soluble. So if you draw with these on an encaustic um, and you fuse it in lightly, that's really cool. Um, whoops. And then like, I, I also like, these are water soluble, same idea as the woodies, but more colors. So these are Neo colors and they're like crayons and they're waxy and you can use them on encaustic. You can use them on acrylic. You could use them on cold wax and oil once it's dry. Um, of course, everybody loves pan pastels and I use these a lot, mostly for encaustic because I found that, you know, once you get your encaustic really flat, then you can uh, do these little tweaks in value and color and all that kind of stuff using your little, Lisa, have you tried that yet with your encaustic? Oh yes, I love it so much. And you know, I have a couple of the blending uh, pan pastels okay. and um, I use a Q-tip. I love the Q-tip better than all their little thingies that they sell you and um, <laughs> Yeah. And the Q-tip's my favorite. And so I will have one of the blending uh, containers out there and like, cause you know, it's never the right color, right? Yeah. So um, I'll have my two pinks or whatever it is I need. Pink is usually it and, and that blending. And so I will kind of make a mess cause I'll do blending one pink, one pink, blending oh, wow. one pink, one pink, one pink, one pink blending, you know? So I'll kind of have a little spot on there where I'm making a mess, but boy, I can get the color and I can get it to go on and do beautifully Ooh. on the encaustics with that. I just kind of played with it cause you know, you yeah. gotta, you gotta figure it out. Right. So yeah, I, I was able. Then you just like, guys, you just use it in lightly, right? Just tiny bit, tiny mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Just little, little areas that need shaded or just, you know, whatever it is you need. But I was able to get those colors that I wanted and, and um, make it work. Cool. And I, you guys, I've, I've talked a lot about my favorite pencil, but I mean, I just, I know, I just love it so much, but I, this is my um, 8046. It's water soluble. It's a Stabilo aquarellable, which just means that, you know, it's water soluble. Mm. However, and this is how I do get them. Like I get hover or 12 in a, in a pack like this, but there are times when you don't want it to be water soluble. This happened to me, um, I guess this morning, I, I really didn't want a water soluble. So, but you want a dark, dark. So this is just a Rembrandt carbon extra soft Lyra. A Lyra pencil, I mean, I just have, like, I look at, it's getting short, and I only really have this one, but I just love the Lyra. It's made in Germany. Um, it's carbon, so. I don't have a Lyra like that. Mine are the short, fat, squattier ones, fatter. I got those, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that one's different? Yeah, like. Um, Besides its shape, it's different? This is the one that fell on the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> This is my Lyra and see, Hi. I attach it. I, this is another one of my favorites guys. It's just get it at the hardware store. I, I swear the hardware store is like a candy store, right? Cause you go yeah. in there, it's like, Oh my gosh, what about this? And what about that? So many things that I'm showing you are from the hardware store and I'm going to show you something else from the hardware store in right now, <laughs> because now we're moving on to like, well, how do you finish a painting? Right? So I talked about the paints and like, you know, the, how to pour the stuff into these gallon things. And now we're going to talk about finishing paintings and like the, the favorite supplies for that. Um, so because I do that four step thing with acrylic, then what you got to need is the, the um, it's steel wool. Notice it has four zeros here in red because that that's the finest grade of steel wool you can even buy. And what I do, I used to use like a whole one for like, and I'll demonstrate this in one second. And before um, you do, Pam, um, Jeff, 
wanted to know if you've been tried in in Costia Flex sheets or something like that. Well, I've heard of it, heard of it, and I'm very curious what that is because the word flex makes me think that it can bend, but maybe it doesn't. Have you tried it, Jeff? Have, have Can you tell us if it flexes or not? Yes, comment about that, Jeff, please. Yeah, um, I have used multimedia artboard. I think that works well for coal wax and oil and um, um, encaustic, but as far as acrylic, I don't particularly like to use it for acrylic. But I will say that if you guys use any steel wool, you don't have to use like the gigantic wad because you'll go through it so much faster. So yeah. recently I got smart and I uh, have a dedicated pair of scissors for things like this that are not, you know, you don't want to use this on paper and steel wool. So I cut this into four pieces and then I just put them into a little Ziploc and they go, wow, they, they, they last a lot longer. And then, so what I want to show you right now, um, well, I'll just talk about this first. Line Co. pH neutral adhesive. This is the adhesive I use for um, mounting paper on panel, um, not necessarily the encaustic monotypes, but any other artwork on paper. Like if it were, for example, a um, mixed media or cold wax and oil on arches paper, this would be what I would use because it's pH neutral. And then I uh, move it into this great squeeze bottle. And that works really well. So, um, and then just, it's good to have a dedicated brush for things like varnishes and um, this four-step method that I use for, again, this encaustic-like finish. Um, I do love, like, it's, I guess there's something special about the brush, but this is a connoisseur brush, and I try to keep it super clean. I never use it for paint. I only use it for that final four-step, like, I'll call it a, a varnish. It's not really a varnish though, but I will have a dedicated brush just for that so that it always stays clean. Hey, Pam. Yeah. Um, Amy was asking about oil and cold wax medium. I didn't catch it that she asked about oil and cold wax medium at first. And she wants to see, can she, they're on paper. Can mm -hmm. she adhere those to the custom cradle boards uh, with them being cold wax? Oh yeah, definitely. Wax. I've done that. Uh, I've done very large scale. Like the largest I've done is 48 by 48. Now the larger it is, uh, it's good to have a helper because like anything, glue, acrylic and all that stuff, they start drying really fast. But if you use the line co and be and the, the, the thing about it, and I do have a video on YouTube on it and I've got even a more detailed one in the library. But the point is that the line co, um, Yes, I would say if it's on a Baltic birch panel or a basswood panel, you want to first seal it with uh, gloss medium because that way, you know, two coats. Number one, you're going to decrease um, any surface um, that discoloration thing. So you stop that discoloration because, because tannins come out of the wood and they can discolor things, right? So you seal the surface and that. Um, and now when you put the, the, this line co on top, it doesn't sink into the wood anymore because you've sealed it with that gloss medium. And now it won't dry on you as fast because part of the reason it dries so fast is because it's like a sponge. And I learned this a long time ago. Um, I put this stuff on a bare, bare wood and it's like, it, it just immediately dried. So just make sure you put two coats of your gloss medium first and then put this, and then it, you'll have a little bit more working time. So yes. the answer is yes. very important for sealing so that wood stuff doesn't come up through your art, whatever. Yeah, that. surface induced discoloration. Yes. So I guess that's what they call it, right, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Yes. So don't forget to seal it. Yeah. So now I want to show you guys um, how I would, because one of you is going to win a panel, panels, six panels and six frames, and you're going to want to know how to do this, right? So the first thing is um, I want to show you the, the, three, the three looks. Hang on a sec. Um, and here's that link again for submitting ideas for Pam to do on Momentum Monday. And let yep. me switch you, Pam, over to yeah. your table. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Making it work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. First thing I want you to know is how super glossy this thing is, right? It's it's really, it's like, it's glossy. And it has um, my pouring medium over the top. So I put this guy over the top and just let it drip off the sides and it's it's dried overnight. Well, I don't like that finish. Um, however, that's step one of my four step process. So 
the first thing I do is I, I let, I put the pouring medium over the top of the acrylic. Sometimes I'll even put two um, coats, but this only has one. It only needed one. And I just want to show you that like the next thing I would do is I would take some, remember I was telling you, I cut these into little bits. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because it, it takes time and it takes patience and a little bit of elbow grease, but not a whole lot. You take your steel wool and I've got a little thing of water here. And this is why I cut them into four pieces because I don't only need this size for this size of um, panel. I don't need the whole, you know, that whole wad. And in circular motions, you want to, you want to go all the, over the entire thing. And what you're doing is you're knocking back the shine. So that incredible shine. Um, so I would, you know, I would just do this, make sure you get the corners and the edges. I'm not going to do it all now, but I just want to show you. And then when you're done with the water and the steel wool, you want to get all of the little particles that fall off of this thing off your painting, right? Cause like you can't see it, but I can see little specks of steel. And <laughs> I made the big mistake. The first time I tried this, I didn't realize these little particles were on my painting. And then I put another layer of the pouring medium on it. And guess what? The next day I had these little, little orange, they look like worms. And what they were, were like the pieces of the steel wool that had rusted. They turned into rust and they were now forever locked into my painting. So I learned the hard way. But um, so the first thing you do is you knock back the shine of steel wool and then you, you know, you get a paper towel that's clean. Make sure you get all little steel pieces off of it like that. Okay, that's step one. Then it's going to look like this one, which is now I've rubbed this one. Look at the difference in shine between there's no shine on it, right? You see that? Yeah. Look at this one. This is how it is before the steel wool. And this is how it is after the steel wool. Okay. So, um, so this one, then I put the cold wax medium over it, thin film, let it dry. And then I gloss it. I, I buff it with um, a cloth like this. So this has been drying. I'm not sure if it's completely dry yet, but you can now shine this up. And I don't have to shine it all the way, but you can see it's starting to get, see that, see that gloss Ooh, now? Nice. It's more, it's more like an encaustic. It's not, it's certainly not this. Right. Um, and it's not completely matte. So that's the thing about encaustic is in between matte and gloss. So let's just, and I can, you can buff this as much as you want, but you're going to get a nice satin. And so that's my favorite surface. Now I'll show you guys, uh, the next thing. So here's another one that it's even glossier because now this is the final buffed surface and you can see how beautiful that is compared to um this other one which is way too shiny this one's way this one's way too shiny because it hasn't been i didn't do the steel wool yet this one is just this gorgeous like it looks like encaustic so now i want to show you guys is um how i would put it into the basswood frame okay because a lot of you were asking well how do you do that and uh notice that there's a, a lip here and it can accommodate an eighth inch or a quarter inch panel. These are eighth inch. And so you've got a little bit more room on the top, but you see how it just like, just falls right in perfect fit because these, because Rex art makes the panel as well as the frame. So that's why, you know, they're going to fit one in one. So what I would do is um, I'm going to pop this out and you just don't need a lot of glue, but I use this uh, just, Tight bond, wood glue. This is the, the it's supposed to be kind of colorless, but it still has a bit of color just because the other one is like that yellowish color. And I'll put um, a little bit in the corners. You don't need a lot. It's a little dab. Now, if you needed to reverse the process and take it out, you just kind of punch it out. It's not like it's impossible to get it out of the frame. Um, just put a little bit in the midway. Okay, then I close the lid and I put the painting in. It's right in like that. Okay, the next thing I do is I uh, put a sheet of wax paper over the top like this. You can put wax paper, you know, freezer paper, parchment paper, doesn't matter, but you're just protecting the surface because now you want to weight it down. 
And so because these are 12 by 12, I choose books that are smaller than 12 by 12. And so I've got my two favorite books here as well. My <laughs> Creative Act and The Atomic Habits. Um, I don't know if they both fit in there, not quite. So anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just put this one like this and I'll put this on top of here. The idea is to really weight it down. Okay, this is not my favorite book, but it's heavy. <laughs> and then- Hey okay, Pam. Um Lorraine asked, would you finish the frame first or later with wax or paint? But you've already uh, cold waxed that frame, right? Yeah, I'll just explain that you can do it after. But I think in, it's, in some ways it is easier just to do it before you pop the painting. You now, you can definitely do it afterwards. I've done that afterwards and had no problems with it. But in general, if I had a choice, I think I'd probably finish it first. Mm -hmm. And what I did was, I'm glad you asked that, um, I took cold wax and that's all I did. And I took a spatula and I scooped up some of this um, cold wax medium and I put it on, like, notice how this little guy has a scooped, like the uh, convex, con concave, concave, like this is like a dip here on this side, but it's the other, it's the, um, how do I show this there? Anyways, you're not going to see it very well, but I wanted it on the side that's not like a spoon so that I could um, grab the cold wax on the back side of this guy and just rub it like this. I, I realized that actually this morning that if I use this tool, you're kind of burnishing that cold wax into the wood okay. versus a paper towel that like it's it's um, absorbing the cold wax. You, you know, like a lot of it goes into the paper towel. When you use a tool like this and you just go like this a lot and then you scoop up the extra like you can just scoop it mm -hmm. up with your tool. Yeah, you I use my next. silicone wedges and that's silicone, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah perfect. So cool. Yeah. And that's, so I would recommend, you know, maybe you do it before just because it's one less thing you have to worry about later. So yeah. then, um, sorry to interrupt. No worries. I cover this up and then put my books on top. And I, I so I have like, this is, um, inset from the wood. Cause if it balances on the wood, then you're not touching the panel and you need to really have the weight on the panel. So then, Oh, Hey, Robert had a great idea. He says he puts a new panel on top of the wax oh, yeah. paper to help distribute the weight evenly. Yeah, that is actually a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could, I could do that. Yes, um, that would be perfect. Maybe do I have another panel? Let's see. We yeah. have a painting right there in front of you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I do have that. That's a great idea. So then, okay, so here's yeah. my. I put an R in it because because I want to make sure I've got panels I got from Amazon and they are not as good because they're not even square. So yeah. I'll put this on top like this. Yes. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. So glad you guys are all here. You guys have so many wonderful ideas. Yeah. So I just would let that sit, you know, for, I don't know, half an hour, whatever. Depends on how impatient I am. And uh, so I'll push this to the side. But I just wanted to show you that that's how I would um, finish the uh, the painting, the acrylic painting, and it's um, really kind of just a, you know, the final thing and doesn't take very long. And so, yeah. Um, and then was there anything else that I wanted to show you? Oh, okay. So for cleanup, because some I know some people have asked, like, how do you clean certain kinds of brushes? And my favorite soap of all is this, um, any you know, get this again at the hardware store, Murphy's. Um, they changed it. It's now called wood cleaner. It used to be called wood soap, I think, but now they call it wood cleaner. Don't ask me why. Um, and I'll pour a little bit into a Ziploc bag and I'll tip it onto its corner. And like yesterday when I was using this brush to uh, move around the, uh, the pouring medium, um, I, I cleaned it out really well first, you know, with underwater and with some soap. But because this brush, I just want it to be as pliable and like um, make it live as long as possible. I, uh, poured, I poured some into a Ziploc and then I put this into the corner of the bag and then I, I sealed it as much as I could and let it sit overnight and then I washed it the next day. Now, if you get paint uh, that dries into the bristles, the only way to rescue it, if you can, like if it's even possible, I found that Murphy, this Murphy product, um, I've been able to revive um, brushes that had, you know, solid dried acrylic paint, 
Um, usually with oils, it's not as much of a problem because what I do with oil brushes, if, if this were full of oil, for example, the first thing I would do is put cooking oil into the bristles, right? And then you just mush it around on, on your surface, your palette or whatever, get, get a lot of that oil out and then remove it with a paper towel or cloth. And then the next step would be to just let it sit in, um, again, a Ziploc or something or a jar that has this wood cleaner. Let it sit overnight at least. And then um, if it's if it's like fresh oil, now if it's dry, you're gonna have to leave it in there for like a week or a month even. And then you just come back and you rinse it out and it'll be like new. So this is a great product. Uh, I don't know why it works, but it just does. Does anyone mm -hmm. have any other product that they like to use for cleaning their brushes? Well, somebody mentioned earlier that they actually have revived, or should I say gotten a dried acrylic paint out of brushes with uh, alcohol. Yeah, so. yeah. Alcohol is pretty amazing. Um, I, I think it's so cool because you can actually remove alcohol from, I mean, you can use uh, remove um, acrylic from a painting with alcohol um, is kind of a lift, you know, and yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. Any other yeah. tips out there? Um, so far, people are just saying the Murphy soap and uh, cheap cooking oil and the alcohol. Um, and somebody wondered about olive or coconut oil for that. I think any oil will work. I always just go for the cheapest. So for me, I think it's usually canola and I think olive oil would be overkill because that's expensive. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Let's go for cheap. And speaking of cheap, let's see, there was another money saving thing. Susan Henry Scott, she's going to, she just has so many wonderful ideas. Thank you, Susan. She saves the wax paper from cereal boxes to oh. use for times when you need wax paper and such. Yeah. That's been very resourceful. And why yeah. not? Because, yeah. you know, um, there's so much waste in, in our everyday lives. And the more you can use, like my husband recently, like we used to use plastic garbage bags and now we don't. We use like empty dog food bags or bird seed bags. And it's like, <laughs> it's almost forbidden to use like plastic garbage bags anymore. <laughs> yeah. And um, oh, one, one last thing I want to show you guys. And this has more to do with storage. And I think at one, some point I do want to do like a, uh, momentum money that talks about um, um, ways to organize your studio and like little things that I found to be super helpful. Like you'd never know that um, you guys who have metal trash pans. Hey, while you're grabbing that, Pam, um, somebody else said there's something called Dissolve and it works very well on dried in paint. Cool. And another one was uh, mineral oil for um, oil and wax brush cleanup followed by washing with special bar of oil paint soap remover. Oh, there you go. Thanks, this, Elaine. This, yeah, yeah, this was the comment about dissolve. And Steph for nuts says baby wipes. I forgot about baby wipes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. a great idea. And then another person says baby oil. So there are so many wonderful things. This will be a wonderful video for people to see all these yeah. resources. Yeah, thank you guys for, for definitely your comments are so helpful because, um, oh, Liquitex uh, glass, okay, this, just repeating, okay. So this little guy here, as simple as saying again from the hardware store, but you know how, if you guys have a metal trash can, you get the lid, right? And what do you do with the lid? It's such an annoying thing because you, <laughs> yes. you don't want to lose it, but you know, it has to be accessible. So I hang this on the handle on the side of the can, and then I hook the lid um, like this. And then it's like, I, I, it's, I'm not going to step on it. And then when I need to find it, when I need to close it up at, the, at night, right, it's right there. So um, yeah, it's an easy thing, but... That's great. We can kind of see that even. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I don't know if I have anything else to really show you. Um, any questions or comments or other ideas that you guys have? Because you all have great ideas. Yeah, everybody's just got some wonderful things. I'll just keep doing this while you guys are talking. <laughs> um, now, Shiloh said alcohol may dry out natural bristle brushes and cause brittleness. Uh, leading to more brush bits. So I'm wondering if there's a way then after you do alcohol, if you can uh, do something to 
uh, revive, like, you know, to, to repair that. Then yeah. so I don't know if you know something about that Shiloh or for anybody else, that is wonderful. Yeah. Love um, you guys' ideas. I would worry a little bit about natural bristles with alcohol, but I, I tend to use all synthetic except for the cheap chip brushes, which, you know, if you right. hit them with alcohol, I don't think that would matter. So. That's right. Yeah. I do for, especially for, um, my acrylic, you know, I use the synthetic and I just use the wow. natural with, um, you know, the wax or I use synthetic and natural with watercolor, but with your hot wax, I did. I take that out. Small. You need to make huh? yourself bigger. <laughs> Me? No, I'm fine. You I'm need to make fine. yourself bigger when I'm not watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking I needed to get your board in there that you're working on. That nobody yeah, not anymore. See. Don't worry about no? that. Okay. Unless, okay. unless people need to see me with this um, steel wool, but you guys, the steel wool, like, and even after the steel wool, like, you know, I don't always have it dripping with water. And sometimes to get that gloss off your pouring medium, I, I just like the drier the steel wool, the faster it goes. So sometimes too much water, I just, you know, you don't Okay, so somebody said hair conditioner could possibly revive it. Oh, yeah. If, if you've done something for natural, that makes sense. It's hair after all. And uh, Becky says she follows up with Dawn dish soap and rinse Ooh. well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Dawn dish soap. Well, after all, it yeah. works for all those ducks that are caught in the oil <laughs> sticks. Right. Yes. And Jan yes. says dissolve is not cheap, but it cleans and conditions the brushes at the same time. So that's Jan, I've know. never heard of that brand even. So I'm going to have to look for it. Is that at a hardware store? Oh, yeah. Is that hardware, Jan, or is that art? Um, another thing I've heard with synthetic um, brushes, I think this is mostly pertaining to acrylic in case it dried. And I've never tried this, but this is something I've heard is if you have boiling water, you dip the synthetic, uh, synthetic bristles in there. And I don't know, they said that like magic, you know, your brush is like new again. Has anyone tried that? Because I heard that and I don't know if it's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Not really sure if I want to dip my synthetic bristles into a pot of boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never um, know. Let's see. Somebody uses, oh, what was that for? Okay. Paint stores for house painting. That's where she gets the dissolve. And um, Maxine Oliver says she's asking about seventh generation dish detergent wondering oh, yeah. how it would do i've heard of that that's a brand that's uh, very like environmentally conscientious and um so okay, if so you want us to see your table i think you took it out or i accidentally took it out and i can't put it back oh did i do that maybe i, I don't see, know i, I could have no, I but probably didn't. There it yeah. is. There okay, is. so yeah. So you can see now I've knocked back the gloss. And I usually you have to like um, change the angle to really see where it's shiny. And it's usually the edges and corners that you forget or, you know, the easy part's the middle and then you kind of forget about the edges and corners. But um, yeah, so this one, it just, it takes a little bit of elbow grease. You keep changing directions and it's a lot of work if your painting's really big, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but if you're in a gallery, like a lot of times um, they, they really like that finish because, you know, I, I, I think that the fact that people think it's an encaustic, which is, I think it's like encaustic can be one of the, the priciest mediums, at least the way that I price my work, um, encaustic's the highest. And it just turns out that um, that's why if you can make an acrylic look more like, you know, waxy surface, I just think that the, there's, it's just a beautiful luster of some final surface. So, um, so uh, two things here. Let's see. Okay. We have more lid storage is brilliant. Terry says master's brush cleaner and preserver is nice for softening and cleaning acrylics, but not cheap. Um, Gail asks about having trouble cleaning encaustic paint off brushes. Any suggestions? But I don't know, other than, you know, kind of sticking it in that cleaner uh, wax. I mean, you're still always going to have wax on it. You could never use it for anything else. Well, is that Gail Wager? Uh-huh. 
Okay, Gail. I mean, are you aware of the that the fact that you can use uh, either paraffin or soy wax is, is really the you know best I think for cleaning your brushes. Although Paula Roland, who knows an awful lot about encaustic and that sort of thing, well, she she is talking more about her hot boxes and saying it's better to use soy wax than paraffin, and I'm not quite sure why, but definitely soy wax and paraffin in a little tin like um, like I showed you. Uh, where I put it? Uh, like if you put it, you know, and it can be a cat can, a, a tin of cat food that's emptied and cleaned, and you put your paraffin in there, and you just clean your brush that way. Have you tried that? Let's see here, because that would work. Yeah, and Milica says she uses gloves for steel wool because she ends up with it in her skin. Yeah, and I probably. When, yeah, probably I do too. And okay. she wonders if there's any other way to dull the surface. Would baking soda work? I don't know. If you rub baking soda, that it does. Because um, isn't Noel salt and baking soda, is that what I use in my coffee pot to get this oh. stuff off the inside? I can't remember. That might be good, Milica. So, so you're talking about dulling an acrylic surface? Uh, rubbing it on there, would that do yeah. that? It might do that. Yeah. yeah. You have to try it. Try it, Milica. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah, it doesn't have, maybe it doesn't have to be steel wool. That would be great if somebody could think of some other way to do it. Uh -huh. um, oh, okay, and Renee good. says she uses lava bar soap as oh. well. Cool. Um, so how many of you are going to enter this contest? I want to, you guys, hit yeah. in the chat, let us know if you're going to enter an idea for us because we want to hear lots of ideas, right? And then we'll yes. keep these momentum monday's going and um there's always going to be painting demos but if there's anything specific you guys are looking for we'd love for you to join the contest and we're at the top of the hour yep, so i want to thank me. all of you for, for being here lisa thank you so much for being the co-host yay and let me post that link in there one more time yeah. here you go and yeah hey, Karen. Hey, Rose. and you know i think there was another question but i just Robert, can't they, they are going so fast so else has already entered oh my gosh she's Yay. just like if it were the first person who entered <laughs> oh i know milica asked about the white stabilo uh the long skinny ones you know have you ever used i think that yeah the pencils um, yes, and I want, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, Stabilo, because they, they, the black is my favorite for the blackest black, but I also love the white, and I, I, I use the white because sometimes I'm working over a dark, you know, dark color. I don't use the red too much, but every now and then it's nice to have the red, and then it also comes in yellow, but I say my favorites are the black and then the white. It's nice to have a few of those, so yeah. But that is my favorite across the board pencil. I don't know what I do without it. I sign my work with that pencil. Like all of these paintings were signed with that Stabilo pencil. And I know you can't really see it all that well, but my signature is somewhere. Oh, it's in this corner here. And um, and all I do is I, uh, I put it on there and then I put some, the Liquitex gel medium onto a paper towel and then I blot it, okay? And then I lift it and then I let it dry and then I blot it again. And that way, even though it's water soluble, it's now like under wax under here and it's not going anywhere and it didn't run. But again, if you have a water soluble pencil, you do, you know, there's certain times you don't want it to run. And when it's your signature, I guess that might be the one time you don't want it to run. That's right. Yeah. And Marla said, Lisa, use ice in your coffee pot. Yes. Ice and salt. I oh. put them both in there and shake ice? them out. <laughs> I never heard about ice. Well, no. it helps to get the coffee. You know how you get the coffee stains in there? And, yeah. and, you know, sometimes they just won't even come off in the dishwasher and it can't be washed in the dishwasher. What does sometimes. ice do? What does well, ice, do? ice is, is, is abrasive enough inside the coffee pot. It helps. And then salt helps too. So oh. at least that's, that's what I've done. And I think I've used baking soda. It's been a long time. That kind of coffee pot is Roy's. Now I don't mess with it. I have the espresso <laughs> maker. That's mine. Yes, <laughs> well, I would choose that too. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being here. And uh, Marla and Barbara already entered. Yay, you guys. Um, the more entries, the more. Listen, every month we're going to do a giveaway. It's, it, it's going to be frames and, and panels, but there could be other goodies that are given away. So yeah, yeah you, you never know. Me. Thank you so much and great to see you guys. Have a great rest of your week.
Bye, Lisa. Bye. Thank you so much for being my host. You're welcome. Thank you. It's Bye, always everybody. fun. Bye. <laughs>